When it comes to the art of Cherokee pottery, there are very few people who can say they learned firsthand from Anna Mitchell, the grandmother of Cherokee pottery. But Crystal Hanna is one of those artisans who felt a calling to learn from Anna and is now a legendary potter in her own right. My name is Crystal Hanna. I am a um, Cherokee potter and I consider myself more of a traditionalist. So I live just like 15 minutes south of Tulsa, between Sepulpa and Tulsa, Oklahoma. My husband and I have moved here because he wanted to keep his horses out here and we decided it was a good place to raise kids. What happens, I think, with a lot of women, not just Native American women, um, our priority is, you know, our husband, our children. So once they are like raised and grown, and when my son was coming home from college, it's like, okay, now what do I do? And so I actually took a will throwing class, and I thought, well, you know, pottery clay would be fun to kind of get into because I've always liked to work with my hands. And so I took a class at the local art studio, and I saw a brochure that Anna Mitchell had been the, uh, the honored one in 1998. And it just really inspired me. She was full-blood Cherokee. And what happened is I called Red Earth. Red Earth is a Native American art festival that's held in Oklahoma City. And they gave me her number and she called me at work the next day and we made plans that very weekend for me to go visit her. And, and she was just so open like that was supposed to happen. And when we would visited for a few hours and I said, Anna, I think I'm supposed to be doing this. One of the things that, that I learned from Anna is to study and research those ancient shapes. One of the things is she said, you know, if you're gonna do, you know, this Southeastern Mississippian style, even early to early woodland style of pottery, you put your own identity on it. But, and don't borrow from other, other cultures. Through just research, one of my favorite uh, authors is uh, James Moody, and he was an archeologist in the late 1800s. And just like reading some of those stories that, you know, that he had written down that were from the elders of that time, you can really get a lot of inspiration, you know, for your next piece that you're gonna make and, kind of, and put your own twist or identity onto it, so. To start a pot, I, I, you can start it a couple of different ways. You can start in a, in a bowl, or you can just start with like a flat piece of clay. When you're making a pot, the, the worst thing that can happen is to have air bubbles in it. So when it gets fired, those air bubbles can get trapped and, and blow the pot out. So. Doing pottery all these years, it's definitely taught me patience because there's just some parts of it that can't be rushed. And right now I'm just like scoring so that I can get that connection. I'm gonna use my cracked pot here. If I were strictly traditional, then I wouldn't even ever have it in an electric kiln. But because we have so much humidity and everything, the way I learned is you would preheat it in your oven at least past 212 degrees or to completely dry the pots. I was in the workforce for almost 40 years and for the past 20 years, my goal was to do art shows, you know, do as many um, art programs, pottery programs as I could. And so far, you know, it's worked out well for me, but not just only to supplement, but to still, you know, carry on my work, which I think is important and be able to pass it down to my own children and grand grandchildren. Fortunately, I've been able to get juried in to the Santa Fe Indian Art Market for 
18 years in a row. And that was kind of Anna's go-to market to the last 10 or 15 years that she did art shows. For me, art shows are hard. I love to make the pottery. I don't mind being at the show, but pricing is very difficult for me. Um, one of the greatest things that I love about art shows is just bartering, you know, bartering with other artists. Um, I've collected some awesome artwork, I can't think really of a better way to spend my time than to, to prepare for art shows and um, spend time with other Native American artists and, and they become like family. Preserving our traditional arts, to me and for most people that are of Native American ancestry, it is a way to preserve our culture through our arts. And so it, it is important you know, to carry on those traditions. Um, I always say, if you know where you came from, then I think you know where you're going. So many of us don't know where we're going, and it does, it helps us as a person. Well, I, I can say that I am very proud of my heritage, and from where I come from, and just even doing the traditional pottery and being able to uh, leave it for the next generations in whatever manner that I can um, is an honor. I'm glad that I'm healthy enough and uh, can be able to get out and, and do the art shows and show that, um, that it's a beautiful art form that hopefully can be appreciated for you know, years to come.